Hello friends. Today we are going to do chapter number 4 London of the novel Oliver Twist written by Charles Dickens. The name of the chapter that we are going to read today is London. Oliver looked to the right and to the left not knowing where to go. Remembered seeing the carts as they left the town going up the hill he took the same road he ran afraid that he might be followed and caught at last he sat down by a milestone the milestone showed that it was thus 70 miles to london london that great big place nobody not even mr bumble could find him there He had a piece of dry bread, an old shirt, and two pairs of socks. He had a penny too, but these will not help me to walk seventy miles in the winter time. He thought. He walked twenty miles that day. All the time, he ate nothing but the pieces of dry bread and had a few drinks of water. When night came he slept in a field he was frightened at first and very cold and hungry but he was very tired and he soon fell asleep and forgot his troubles next morning he was cold and he was so hungry that he had to spend his penny on bread he walked only 12 miles that day another night in the cold air made him worse his feet hurt and his legs felt weak he could hardly walk as the days passed he grew weaker a man gave him a meal of bread and cheese and an old lady gave him food and some kind words without this he would have fallen dead on the road Early on the seventh morning, Oliver walked slowly into the little town of Barnet, a few miles from London. The streets were empty. Oliver sat on a doorstep. He was covered in dust, and there was blood on his feet. People began to pass, but no one spoke to him. Then he saw a boy looking at him. The boy walked up to Oliver. "Hello. What's the trouble?" He was a strange boy. He was about Oliver's age, but he behaved like a man. He wore a man's coat when reached nearly to his feet, and a man's hat which looked as if it would fall off at any moment. "What is it?" he asked Oliver. I am very hungry and tired," said Oliver. "I have been walking for seven days." The tears rose to his eyes. "Seven days," said the boy. "Oh, I see. You need food. I will pay for you. Up you get." He helped Oliver to rise and took him to an inn where Oliver had a good meal with his new friend. Going to London," said the strange boy. When Oliver had at last finished, "Yes, have you got anywhere to stay?" "No. Do you live in London?" said Oliver. "Yes, I do. When I am at home, I suppose you want somewhere to sleep tonight, don't you?" "Yes," answered Oliver. "Don't trouble yourself any more about it." said the boy i am going to london tonight and i know an old gentleman who will give you a bed for nothing he knows me very well oliver found that boy's name was jack dawkins jack refused to enter london before dark so it was nearly 11 o'clock before they reached the city He walked fast, and Oliver followed him down a narrow street into one of the dirtiest places he had never seen. Oliver 
begin to think that he ought to run away. But suddenly, Dawkins caught him by the arm, pushed open the door of a house, and pulled him inside. Dawkins took Oliver's hand and helped him up in the dark and broken stairs. He threw open the door of a room and drew Oliver in after him. The walls of the room were completely black with age and dirt. Some meat was cooking over the fire. There was a very old man standing by the fire. His name was Fagin. He was dressed in dirty clothes and his evil looking face was half hidden by his red hair. He seemed to be dividing his attention between the meat and a line on which a lot of silk handkerchiefs were hanging. Several rough beds were placed side by side on the floor. Four or five boys were sitting round the table. They were smoking long pipes like men. This is Oliver Twist, said Jack Dawkins. The old man took Oliver by the hand and said that he hoped to have the honor of his friendship. Then the young men with the pipes came round and shook both Oliver's hand very hard, especially the hand in which he held his handkerchief. One young man was anxious to hang up his cap for him. And another put his hands in Oliver's pockets to save Oliver the trouble of emptying them before he went to bed. We are very glad to see you, Oliver, said Fagin. Ah, you are looking at all those pocket handkerchiefs. We have just got them ready to wash. That's all, Oliver, that's all. Ha 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 ha! The boys laughed all at this and they began to have their supper. Oliver ate with them. Then they gave him a bed on the floor and he fell into a deep sleep. Thank you friends. Bye bye.